All right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing monochromatic ice cream using tints and shades. Coming up, let's get going. All right, so over here, as you can see, I have an example from a couple years back of monochromatic ice cream. However, notice what it's done with. It's done with acrylic paint. Now we don't have paint at some people's houses, so I'm gonna do a version of this project where paint's not required. Now with that said, you do need a piece of paper, uh, some a marker to outline it with, and some crayons. Uh, you can do this with marker, but it's very hard to get the shades right. Uh, you can do this in colored pencil as well. Uh, but I, I just have crayons right here anyway. So anyways, um, when it comes to crayons or colored pencils, when you're doing this, you want to have at least five shades of the same color, uh, and that's going to help us do this. Now, if you don't have five, uh, you can do three, and then just do pressure sensitivity when it comes to doing light and dark. Now, when it comes to light and dark, um, let me teach you guys something. So this side, when it comes to light, um, it is called a tint, and as the same color goes darker, it's called a shade. Now that's called monochromatic, so what you want to do is not choose more than one color. Mono means one, and chromatic means color, hence monochromatic. So that's how that word is built, and that's how we're going to build our ice cream. Now, with my paper, I'm going to make sure my paper is vertical, first of all. And I just mixed up my colors accidentally, so I'm going to have to test it out again. Now, if you can't, if you don't know which one's lighter or which one's darker, I highly suggest you use another sheet of paper or the back sheet of paper to try to test it out. So I just mixed up my crayons, unfortunately. But um, I think I remember which one are darker. I know Sepia is the darkest one, followed by brown. You can find my brown. Yeah, it is brown. This is definitely the lightest visually. And I don't know about these two over here, though. So let me just test it out real quick. All right. All right, this one is a little bit uh, darker, so I'm gonna go like that. So I'm gonna make sure I put this to the side. Maybe I'll put it at an angle so it doesn't roll away <laughs> on my table. All right, here we go. Now, um, you can do a cone when it comes to your ice cream, just like how I did over here. Uh, but for me, I'm gonna do a bowl instead. That way, the picture's not so brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bowl really low. So probably around right here. There we go, or cup, you know, like a little Dixie cup. I'm gonna round out the bottom so it's more three-dimensional. And then I'm gonna leave the top alone. Now, if you're doing a cone, all you gotta do is a triangle shape, just like this. For me, cup. <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do next, instead of drawing the top lid, I wanna start off by drawing the ice cream. Normally, what we would do is that we would do the scoops on a separate sheet of paper, cut them out, and then glue them on. Uh, but again, for remote learning, we're gonna edit it, edit it a little bit so it's a little bit easier for us to do at home. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my loop-de-loops -loops down here, a couple bumps to resemble the bottom of the ice cream, and then I'm gonna curve it up like this, and then I'm gonna count how many ice creams I want. So I want five in total, so here's one. I'm gonna count, so I need my second one up here, two, so it's a little bit even, so you wanna make sure these curves are straight up and down, or the rows, sorry, the rows. So I'm gonna keep going, here we go. Three, three, four. So one, two, three, four. I have a fifth one right here, and it could be a tad bit smaller or shorter in length. So notice how it's kinda of going a little bit smaller. And now I can go backwards by making them. So I'm gonna go up here, Maybe I want to have this one to have a little bit of a drip of some sort of flavor on top, maybe whipped cream. And I'll add a little cherry on top. Whoop! And then for the next one, all I gotta do is just keep curving to connect them. Just like this. And that's how you make stacked ice cream. And again, you wanna do a cone, go ahead. I'm not doing a cone because I'm picking brown for my ice cream because I like coffee flavored ice cream, I like chocolate ice cream. Um, so again, you can choose any flavor you want. If you want strawberry, probably do this color. <laughs> but for me, I really like like toffee, butter pecan, and those type of flavors. So here we go. Uh, I don't want my cup to be blank on the bottom, so maybe I'll add a little bit of a light blue. So just to give it more character. There we go. A couple L's here. There we go to give it more shape. And if I want to add more shadow, maybe I'll add some shadow just like this and since it's tall I might as well go off the page just like that all right and I might as well make it into a table while we're at it I'm 
adding all this extra stuff that I didn't think I was going to do, but here I am. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, if you want to do a background, go ahead. All right, with that said, why don't I start adding the colors? So I can either go from tint to shade or shade to tint, doesn't matter to me. Um, for me, I'm gonna go with the darkest on the bottom and then I'm gonna go lighter as I go up. I think that's the best way. Um, so with that said, I think I'm gonna do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so in order to create these shadows, we would normally do it with white paint or blank sheets of white paper. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the shades prematurely with uh, a pencil. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlights here and there. They could be different if they want. And what's gonna do is it's gonna create a highlight by not creating any colors in them. I'm gonna leave them white. If you wanna add drips, you can. Um, I accidentally do this in Sharpie already, so I can't add too many drips here and there. We'll add a drip right here. Um, maybe I'll add a drip right here. Teardrop right here maybe. And maybe one big one right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna outline just the drips in my marker, but I'm not gonna outline my highlights because I wanna make sure those are staying nice and bright. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna start coloring. So why don't I start off with my darkest one, which is the sepia. Sepia is nice and dark. Here we go. And notice how I'm leaving my highlight nice and white. If you want to add some highlights on the bottom, you can. So maybe I'll add maybe one or two. There we go. And it's very dark underneath each of the ice cream. So I'm going to press a little bit harder. So again, if you have colored pencil, you could definitely do the pressure technique to make a darker color. So if you don't have five different colors, just play around with the sensitivity by pressing harder or lighter. And be careful not to break your materials. Because I've broken many crayons that way. <laughs> Right. I'm going to avoid the teardrop because maybe I want to do it in a different color. Alright. Maybe I'll add a little bit of darkness right there by pressing harder. Pressing harder over here. Pressing harder over here. There we go. Alright, so why do I do that like that? Um, I'm not going to need this brown anymore because it wouldn't make sense if there was like a darker uh, teardrop up, up there on top. It's not, does not work like that. Um, why don't I do the next color which is just plain brown just like this and it could should show you a different type of shade right here and I could kind of see it I gotta see when I'm done but I can kind of see the difference there we go all right let's do the bottom parts Maybe I'll add a highlight right there Maybe a highlight right there. There you are. All right. And with that said, why don't I press a little bit harder in some portions, in some spots. Press a little harder. Press harder here. Press harder here. Press harder there. Oh, I covered my highlight. That's okay. And maybe I should add, nah, I'll wait. Should I wait? Yeah, I should wait. All right, I'm gonna put this one away. I don't need that one anymore. All right, the next color I picked was Burnt Sienna as my next one. So I'm gonna put my burnt sienna right here. I put two highlights on top actually, there we go. I might put a highlight right here. Yep, just like that. Right, I'm gonna avoid the teardrop. And actually I could probably use this color for the, some of the teardrops on the bottom, which I will. All right, let me fill this in. Just like that. Color this part normally, maybe add another highlight right there. All right, and then finally press harder again. And then maybe I could probably add this teardrop right here. This color, add a little bit of a highlight. There we go. Maybe I'll do this drip right here because we're so close. There we are. All right, I can put this one away. All right, what's next? The next one is Tumbleweed. Interesting. I think I might put tumbleweed on this teardrop right there, so I don't forget. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna add my highlights now, so I don't forget. I wanna highlight right here. There you go. That way I don't color it in by accident. All right, keep going right here. Here, make sure I don't hit that highlight. Especially this one I just created. 
I can call it normally. Once I call it normally, I'm going to press harder like I always do. Alright. Ta da! Alright, let's keep going. I think I can put this one away too. Alright, this last one. Uh, well, before I do that, actually, I'll do that later. Alright, let's do the next and last one right here. I might as well do this here drop because it's the last color. Alright, so now I'm going to shade this one normally. And this one's probably going to have a lot more highlights, so it's the top one. There you go. Maybe another highlight right there. Alright, this one's going to have a lot of highlights because it's the very top layer. Alright, I am going to leave this top whipped part uh, white, but in order to emphasize the cherry, I might as well use red. Um, should I use scarlet? I think scarlet should work great. Yeah, scarlet looks perfect. There we go. All right. Well, I think I'm completely done. Uh, crayon does leave a little bit of a residue. Just gotta wipe it off. Just like that. And project's done. Okay. Well, I enjoyed this project a lot. I don't know why I have to sneeze. Hold on. Anyways. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I'm sure I did. I apologize that we couldn't be able to paint. Um, but maybe when we go back to school, maybe we'll do it again. I don't know. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.